The world is celebrating International Tiger Day today in an attempt to raise awareness on the endangered species. Issuing a message on the occasion of Global Tiger Day, Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal informed that Nepal has successfully achieved its target of doubling the number of tigers by the year 2022, which was committed at the Tiger Summit held in St. Petersburg, Russia in 2010. According to a tiger census carried out last year, the tiger population in Nepal had increased to 355 from 121 in 2010. Good evening, I'm Abhude Shrestha, and these are the headlines of the hour. Tiger population in Nepal rises to 355 with the addition of 234 tigers in the past 12 years. Expanding favorable habitat and increasing food for the tigers a challenge. Less than 35% of employees working in Madhesh province as per posting, development works affected. Secretaries complain of unfavorable working environment in the province. Vietnam jails former officials and diplomats in mass bribery trial. More than 50 people found guilty of corruption charges over repatriation flights during the COVID-19 pandemic. And Sweden reached the FIFA Women's World Cup pre-quarterfinals, thrashing Italy 5-0. France edge past Brazil 2-1 and Jamaica also blank Panama 1-0. It's International Tiger Day today, which Nepal has been celebrating since 2010. A century ago, tigers ranged around 100,000 in number. However, a decade back, their number declined to 3,200. In 2010, countries gathered at the Tiger Summit held in St. Petersburg, Russia, and jointly decided to raise efforts to protect the species. As part of the effort, Nepal also managed to double the number of tigers, which till 2022 had reached 355 from 121 in 2010. Chitwan is home to 128 tigers. The Bardia National Park has 125 tigers, Banke 25, Porsa 41, and Suklafanta 36. A census to find out the number of tigers in Nepal was carried out last year. According to the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF, the tiger population in the world has reached 4,500, out of which most are found in India, Nepal, Bhutan, Russia, and China. According to the WWF, the number of tigers in Bhutan has increased by 27% since 2015 to reach 131. Likewise, the tiger population in India is 3,167. A tiger travels a distance of almost 10 kilometers within a day, while an adult tiger consumes 15 to 16 kilograms of meat for a meal. With the increase in the number of tigers in Nepal, the challenge of expanding favorable habitat for them and increasing the number of animals on which tigers feed has also increased. The Thai region of Nepal is considered one of the most favorable habitats for tigers. The number of tigers in the country has increased by 234 since the year 2010. Meanwhile, during this period, a number of incidents where human lives were lost due to tiger attacks have been reported. 80 individuals died due to tiger attacks within 10 years. Nepal has been able to attain its target of target in promoting wildlife to a certain extent. However, the work plan should now emphasize the safety of local residents, improvement in agriculture system, and management of lifestyle. The government now faces challenges of increasing, of creating favorable environment for humans and wildlife to coexist within the territory of conservation areas and to control the increasing threat of poaching. In our public voice segment today, we have asked people in several provinces regarding ways to reduce human-wildlife conflict. Let's take a look at what they had to say. सामुदायिक वनहरूमा भयो राम्रो तारबारको व्यवस्था गरी सरकारवालाले राम्रो ध्यान दिएर तिनीहरूमा राम्रो सुरक्षा प्रदान गरी मानिस र वन्यजन्तु बीच राम्रो सम्बन्ध बनाउन सकिन्छ वन क्षेत्रहरूमा चाहिँ सही तरिकाले राष्ट्रिय निकुञ्जहरू बनाएर चाहिँ तिनीहरूको व्यवस्थापन गर्नुपर्छ बेला बेला गरे भने 
तब राम मैले पृथ्वी चाह संपूर्ण प्राणी को साझा हो भाई बुझ् पर्च The appointment of government employees has been affected since the beginning of implementation of federalism. It has been found that less than 35% of employees are working in Madhya Province as per posting. Differences between officials appointed at the center and the province have been witnessed on several occasions. Two secretaries at the office of the chief minister of Madhya Province have been transferred elsewhere after they complained of unfavorable working environment. The remarks shared by Bhishma Kumar Bhushal and Noor Hari Khatiwara who had been appointed secretaries at the office of the chief minister of Madhya province have become a topic of issue. There is a provision that the joint secretary of the federal government can be appointed as the secretary at the provinces. The government had decided to appoint Bhushal who was the joint secretary at the Ministry of Home Affairs as the province secretary on 23rd of February earlier this year. He began serving at the post from 11th of May. However, Pushal returned to Kathmandu the following day. Pushal reached Janapur on 3rd of July and left for the capital 2 days later. Kishor Kumar Choudhury, who is Pushal's junior, is the chief secretary at the office of the chief minister of Madhesh province. Pushal had complained of not being appointed as the chief secretary despite being Choudhury's senior. Pushal expressed his grievances through a digital platform Facebook while Sitaram Agrahari the press adviser of the chief minister issued a press release refuting Pushal's claims Pushal has already been transferred to Bagmati province likewise Noor Hari Khatiwara who had been appointed secretary at Madhya province also expressed grievances through the digital platform he said that he had to endure pressure and exploitation He was transferred to the Commission for Indigenous Nationalities by the Ministry of Federal Affairs after he refused to return to Madhya Province. Khatiwara had left Janakpur after Chief Secretary Kishor Kumar Choudhury demanded a clarification from him. Government officials have complained of unfavorable working environment in Madhya Province on several occasions. However, leaders have been blaming officials of inability to accept centralization and federalism. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we had asked you what should be done for the expansion of cold storage to save agricultural produce. 55% voted for A, increase investment, 5% voted for B, pressure from farmers, and 40% voted for C, utilize existing resources. Here's today's question. Why has the problem of employee management in provinces and local levels not been resolved? Your options are A, lack of laws, B, clash between public representatives, and C, centralized mindset. The voting is on. Type any WS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The Lalitpur police circle has arrested an individual and started investigation on charges of loan sharking as well as rape. Police have arrested Suryaman Mali, a local resident of Techu Lalitpur, after a 34-year-old woman accused him of taking hold of her house against 500,000 rupees she had borrowed from him about 4 years ago. She also accused him of raping her multiple times. The woman has said that Mali forced the forged the document and demanded 5.5 million rupees. Police have urged the woman to file a report against Mali. Police have said that further investigations will be carried out once the victim files a case against him. Police have said that once the victim provides details of the incident, they will coordinate with government attorney and proceed with the case. It's time now for the international update. Vietnam has jailed former officials and diplomats in a mass bribery trial. More than 50 people have been found guilty of corruption charges over repatriation flights during the COVID-19 pandemic. A Vietnamese court has handed prison sentences to 54 officials and business people, including a former deputy foreign minister in one of the country's largest ever bribery cases. 
State media reported the defendants were found guilty of taking part in a scheme in which diplomats and companies took money from Vietnamese citizens abroad who wanted to return home on rescue flights during the COVID-19 pandemic when commercial flights were not available. The trial marked the latest escalation of the government's anti-graft campaign under which hundreds of officials have been investigated and many forced to quit, including President Nguyen Xuan Phuc and two deputy prime ministers. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.